In the previous lesson, we looked at the holistic understanding of the ways in which the economy changed under the reign of Nicholas II between 1894 and 1917. We focused specifically on two main areas within the economy. We focused first on industrial developments, the extent to which industry had changed, improved to an extent uh, during this period. And then we looked at agricultural policy, the ways in which agricultural policies improved the state of agriculture during this period. This lesson is going to build upon the issues that we looked up at and looked at in the previous lesson, but instead focusing more with our eye on the idea of societal changes. This means that we will look at some economic changes to an extent, but more looking at the downstream impacts of these economic changes, i.e. the impact that they have over society and societal changes. So, specifically, what we're going to examine is the growth and emergence of a new middle class within the Russian Empire during this period, which is obviously a very important element and will become even more important as we start to think about the ways in which radical opposition began to um, began to fester within the Russian state, specifically against Nicholas II himself. We're also going to talk about the growth of urban regions, this is something that comes with the territory in relation to, of course, the growing industrialization of the Russian state. So obviously that's going to be a very important element. And then finally, we will focus, about, uh, focus on this idea of reforming uh, social welfare and how social welfare reforms takes place as well. So let's begin first with the middle class, the growing emergence of the middle class. Now, we see that because of industrialization, we noted already that industrialization in the Russian state takes place at a delayed rate in terms of it takes place a few decades after the beginnings of industrialization in the rest of Western Europe, for example. And it also takes place at a particularly fast rate as well. We see it quite significantly uh, being implemented um, at quite a high cost to the Russian state, hence why we have a greater inflow of investments during this period. And because of this growth in industrialization, we see that there is a more, there's a greater prominence of individuals that we would collectively and colloquially describe as forming a new middle class. So individuals like factory and workshop owners, managers, traders, and even educated professionals all became more prominent and they grew in, in terms of their numbers as a result of the fact that there was a growth in industrialization. These people began to increase their role that they were beginning to play in uh, institutions of local government as well. So, for example, in the Zemsfa, they were generally... Um, sitting in opposition to the Tsar as a result of the fact that there was a lack of representation, as a result of the fact that subsequently and during the 1906 April fundamental law, it becomes very clear that uh, Nicholas wants to retain his autocracy. And so as a result of all of these uh, influences, we note that there is this growing amount of middle class uh, influence that is partly the result of industrialization and that these individuals are becoming increasingly opposed to Nicholas himself. Secondly, there is, of course, as a result of the fact of industrialization, more people moving into the cities we see, and as the cities obviously being the industrial regions, we see a growth in the urban population. An example here uh, shows just how significant this growth was. Between 1867 and 1917, we see the urban population rise from around 7 million in 1867 to 28 million in 1917. So, a significant increase, a, a, a fourfold increase in the number of individuals who had gone into the uh, and become part of this urban population. By 1914, as a result of this increase in industrialization, around 10% of the Russian population were factory workers. So there was a major, major shift away from the agricultural sectors within the Russian Empire towards more industrial working environments. 
the reason for this. Well, A, of course, industrialization. You can't have industrial workers without industrialization. Uh, and B, we also have the fact that because uh, Nicholas's grandfather, Alexander II, had issued the edict which essentially freed the serfs, that meant that they were able to move around the country more. Couple this with greater transport links, with the introduction of new railways under Nicholas II, and we see more freedom of individuals to go and work in whatever areas they so choose. And given the fact that because of industrialization, there is an increase in the profitability of working in these urban environments, we see floods of individuals working into these cities, and as a result of which, the population of these cities, uh, or just generally the population of the urban uh, groups, begin to increase uh, fourfold increase in the 50 or so years that was 1867 to 1917. Now, even though even though industrial, uh, the Industrial Revolution, industrialization led to an increase in these urban workers, we see that working conditions themselves were actually incredibly poor. So around 40% of these individuals ha uh, of sorry of the rented houses that existed in St Petersburg for example they had no running water and sewage was collected in handcarts this is by the way during the 20th century the industrial revolution not during Tudor England, for example. So you can see the significance in terms of the working and living conditions that still uh, plagued a lot of the Russian states. There was also, when it came to workplace regulation, i.e. workers' rights and employment rights, there was very little of it during this period. So, for example, in 1914, women made up 20% of the workforce, but were by far the lowest paid. So there was, of course, a gender pay gap. I mean, the fact that there's a gender pay gap today in the UK uh, means that you should probably expect that there was a gender pay gap in, in the Russian Empire in the late 1800s. Um, but similarly as well, there were very few regulations when it came to working hours. There was very few regulations when it came to of, uh, official pay, statutory uh, sick pay, any of these different kinds of things. Um, they just didn't exist. And so there was very, very poor working conditions. In addition to the poor working conditions, we also should note that there were significant issues relating to social welfare reforms. So between 1885 and 1914, so throughout the reigns of Alexander II, Alexander III and Nicholas II, there were a number of social welfare reforms. Um, but we see that these are, are somewhat liberal and progressive and then somewhat uh, reformist and reactionary. So in 1885, for example, we see nighttime work for children and women being banned. That's obviously a good thing. Uh, a year later, in 1886, we see employment contracts being introduced. These would be able to improve working conditions because people will have in writing and be able to negotiate their conditions for work and their conditions for pay. Uh, in 1892, we also see the legalization of trade unions. And in 1914, we see normal factory work being reduced to 10 hours a day. So there were significant improvements when it came to social, social welfare reforms. And I should note as well that the reason why this is not just the reign of Nicholas II, but also covering the reigns of Alexander II and Alexander III and Nicholas II, is because if you get an exam question on this kind of topic, you're probably uh, quite likely going to get an exam question that covers a broader range than just Nicholas II's reign himself. You might get a Nicholas II only, but you might also get a question relating to the ways in which social society developed or improved between 1885 and 1914, or between 1892 and 1914. And so it's important that we, we examine them all together as a, as a general trend towards greater liberalisation when it came to social welfare reforms, from beginnings in 1885 with Alexander II all the way till 1914 with Nicholas II.